Alright, what's up guys, Robo here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, play around with your own patterns and brushes, and I know a lot of people have covered this in tutorials before, a lot of people do how to make your own patterns, how to make your own brushes, and stuff like that, and I thought it was too basic for me to do yet another tutorial on it, so I decided to vary it up with kind of effects and how to create your own as well, about how to use them effectively. So. I'm going to open Photoshop and this is a background I made for a guy called Jinto or whatever. Um, anyway, this is a background I made and as you can see it's got scan line, a scan line pattern here and this kind of shatter is all a brush that I made by myself and um, there's a grunge brush behind the text as well which is less, less obvious, a bit more subtle but I'll show you how to make that. So I'm going to create a new canvas at 1600 by 900 because that's my resolution. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just add a simple gradient to the canvas. This isn't necessary for you if you want to make a YouTube background or something else. Um, this isn't really that necessary. But I'm just going to add a gradient and prepare for the patterns. So first of all we're going to start off by looking at different patterns that we can make. So if you wanted to make a text pattern, we could add, I'm going to pick a nice font, actually just for the sake of it I'm going to go with the Optic Gaming logo as a pattern, because I recently did that in Midnight's background. So I'm going to use this font called Xirod, um, I don't know how you pronounce that, always hard. Um, so I'm going to type in an O, scale it up a bit, and then create a new layer, and add a G like that. So you just want to move it over so it basically resembles the, the logo. And if you wanted you could use Colony Wars or another font and I know that's not very accurate at the moment but for the sake of the tutorial we're just going to keep them. So now you want to select both layers and right click and click um, Merge Layers wherever that's gone. Okay I'll just hit Control E or Command E because that's simpler. And then if you go to Control A or select all, then go to edit, copy, file new, and when you select file new it automatically kind of adjusts the width and height to what's on your clipboard, so what you've copied. So I'm going to add about 5 to each one and make that 100 and this one 80. And then paste what you've copied in there and you'll see that that's left a border of 5 pixels between the edge. So now what you want to do is hide the background layer and then hit control so you've selected both of these layers here and then go to edit where is merge layers in this? oh well just hit control E or command E again and you'll see that it all becomes one layer so now what you want to do is go to select all and then go to edit define pattern and then here you'll see I can just name this optic okay so now you want to go onto your blank document, hide the original layer, and then you want to go down to this semicircled black and white icon and just go to pattern. And it should automatically do the last one, but as you'll see there you've got a nice optic gaming font. Now I think that's too big, so personally I'll scale it down. And then you can just lower the opacity if you want, like that. And now if you want to rotate this, you can right click, click rasterize layer, then hit control T or edit transform and then just hit like 45 degrees up here or move it yourself then hit enter and you can get a soft brush and just go around the outside to give it a nice fade if you want um, but yeah that's that's one kind of pattern that we can do and uh, now I'll run through a few more common ones so if we want to do a scan lines pattern which is just a load of vertical lines going across horizontal lines, sorry, going across the screen. Um, you can go to a new document, Control N, and make the width and height both 10. Now, this is going to vary depending on what you want. Like, I usually leave a, a gap of one pixel. So, create a new layer and get your line tool. I'm going to go and wait to actually and just drag it across holding down shift and that's not very good I'm going to use the marquee tool so you want to select two like that 
hit Alt backspace to fill it with black then drag it two down and then another two down because you want to leave one blank and then one not blank and then drag another two down and another two down and then hit that one and I'm going to extend this because you actually want to uh, so if I extend this by another two hard to do that actually okay so I'm just going to guess it's about there and we can check yeah that looks about right yep that looks perfect so now you want to have a black line and then a clear line, a black line, clear line, black line, clear line or however many you want you could do another couple and then we're going to do the same process control and click on the background and merge them together by pressing control E or command E then hit select all edit define pattern and then type in scan lines okay then you can go here go to the semicircle and click pattern and as you'll see there if you zoom in a bit more you have effective scan lines so now you can put those on like 30% and if you go to rasterize type or rasterize layer by right clicking you can rub out some of the scan lines which gives a nice fade effect as well and you can also if you don't like the color of these go to when you've rasterized it you can go to color overlay and you can actually make these red or you can make these blue and increase the opacity like so. Alright so now we've got scan lines out of the way the last and final pattern I wanted to show you is actually the grid pattern. Um, this has become very popular so I'm just gonna show you how to make a simple one and I know this has been covered a lot before but if you go to control N width 10 height 10 and again zoom in there we go I'm gonna create a new layer and hide the background layer now if you want to do this black you can, if you want to do this white you can as well, I'm going to do it white just for the sake of the tutorial you want to select a one pixel column down the left right hand side like this and just fill that with black I'm going to do it black, why not and then you want to select a one pixel row down the bottom and then fill that with black on the same layer so you'll have this sort of reversed L shaped kind of thing on in the corner and then in the same process you just want to hold down control select the background layer and then go to merge by control E or command E then go to select all edit define pattern and then type in grid okay so now what you want to do is just go to this thing semicircle thing and click on pattern and then there you go you have your own sexy grid so if you want to go in 20 again that looks very nice too so you can do whatever you want with that I'd suggest going on overlay or something if you're going to make a background because that gives it quite a nice effect as well so that's it for patterns I'm going to delete this layer and now we're going to get started on brushes so if I I'm going to give you a quick example. I downloaded these grunge, um, grunge brushes from DeviantArt. So if I create a new layer, and this is really the only good brush of the set in my opinion, but you can't use it too often without it becoming, it's just looking like you've used the same brush over and over again, which you have, but you don't want to use any more because say for example I use this one here, that one's actually quite a good one as well. Um, Alright, if I use this one, you can see that it just cuts off and I don't really want that because it doesn't give a nice effect so if I delete this layer what I'm going to show you how to do is create using the same brush a pattern not a pattern but like a nice texture that looks like you've used a lot of different brushes so now if we get the good brush of the set and go to this little brush icon here if you don't have it go to window and then make sure brushes is ticked Okay, if you've got brushes ticked, it'll take it, it'll show you, and then tick brushes again. Okay, so here what you want to do is go to Shape Dynamics, Size Jitter all the way up, Minimum Diameter all the way down, Angle Jitter all the way up, Roundness Jitter all the way down, and then if you want to add a bit more texture, go to Other Dynamics, this isn't essential, 
and add opacity jitter at about 30% I'd say and then if you just brush around you'll see that this creates a really nice effect because it doesn't look like the same brush has been used over and over again because it rotates it and it adjusts the size for you and it adjusts the opacity for you which adds a really really good effect for backgrounds okay so now we've done that I'm going to show you how to create your own brushes and it's very very simple um, very similar to the patterns what you want to do here is go to file new and I'm going to go with 100 by 100 because you want brushes to be regularly um, relatively big sorry because you can always scale them down it's not really much of a problem so we're going to create a new layer and hide the background layer now what I'm going to show you is how to create this sort of shattery one here and yeah it'll provide a nice shatter effect when you're done so what you want to do is get your pen tool or your polygonal lasso tool it doesn't really make a difference which one you use and you want to select a kind of skewed shape like like this that'll do that's fine I think I sort of want to move that one but it's a bit late now okay and I'm going to create a new layer and fill it with black and once you've got this shape you want to merge all the layers together by hitting control and then clicking them all and then go to control E and merge layers so you've only got this one layer here now you want to kind of center it and then go to select all edit define brush preset and then I'm going to type in shatter okay so now what you want to do is go back to your empty canvas and select your brush tool and scroll right down to this shatter brush which you just created create a new layer and then go to your brush brushes uh, section if you don't have the brushes section go to window and then tick brushes if you've just tuned in <laughs> and um, go to shape dynamics size jitter all the way up angle jitter all the way up other dynamics I tend to have it right up for this and you can have scatter if you want but it doesn't work so well with small brushes so now if you just drag your brush along the screen you'll see that it creates a nice load of different brushes that look like it's a shatter, a 2D shatter effectively and I think that gives a really nice effect because they're really they're really irregular so and what I usually do is I go to filter sharpen and then sharpen edges just to give it that more of a a strong bold effect and then you can lower the opacity like 50 if you want so that's pretty much how to do that shatter background um, or a shatter brush effect uh, I hope you've learned something from this even though it's a relatively basic tutorial I tried to make it a little bit more complex because you know you don't want to watch the same thing over and over again but there's still people who ask to see this so yeah I hope that I hope you uh, you learned something from this and uh, I'll see you later guys thanks for watching bye